Welcome back to RuneWorld. Why is this? What, what what has changed? Why are we on a different map? Great question. Well, it's a simple answer. Uh, basically, one of the mods I had was not compatible with um, the other Call of Cthulhu storyteller in particular. I was recording a video, as I am wont to do, and then suddenly, apparently, we were attacked by genetically engineered mechanoids, which turned up, kicked the front door down, and instantly murdered Igor Throog. There was no chance of me reacting, and she hit them once and did no damage. So... I'm thinking that event is just not compatible with the storyteller. Anyway, I've, I've done some rebalancing for the mod pack in particular, and I know you guys are going to be very happy about this. I've removed Speed 4 because I feel like it's very distracting. It, I'm missing a lot of very obvious things I should be doing with it. So I'm slowing the series down, going for a fresh start. I mean, does it matter that much? We moved into a building and built a bed. Not really much lost. You know, if it would be five episodes in, maybe it'd be different. Maybe I'll try and find a way around it. But this is fine. And honestly, looking at this map, I'm liking this map a lot more than the map we were playing on the last time. There's plenty of abandoned buildings. So we've got some intrigue there. A big old mountain to build into, which I like the sound of. I, I, I enjoy building mountain bases, if you haven't guessed. We've also got this big building outside as well, which I'm interested in seeing what we can do with. Maybe this could be our initial setup point. We'll build the coat itself into the mountain. Anyway, that being said... Let's get up on our feet. I'll skip past the initial boring stuff of me building the base and get the bedroom set up and we'll hop straight back in when we've built our occult altar. And all I'm going to do is just repurpose one of these buildings anyway, so you're not missing out on much. Alright, so what's changed since last time? Well, honestly, nothing. All I've done is flipped a shooting stat round for melee and I've swapped out the titanium hook for uh, this gun here. Not sure what it is. Um, it's added by the faction discovery mod, I believe, which is a little bit annoying because that is, you know, necessary for the extra factions that we've added, but there we go. Um, it's slightly better than an assault rifle, so I didn't think it was too OP. She's only got like 10 shooting anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. It was just so I could actually hunt. Funnily enough, you can't really hunt very effectively with a big old titanium hook. Well, let's see what's in this building, and, uh, see if it's anything... Oh! Okay, I was gonna say see if it's anything worth worrying about, but this seems kind of nice. Okay, then. Um, we got ourselves a little chest set there. Bone Creek. Oh, is this all Bone Creek? Oh my god, it's a dream come true. We've got the bone base. Um, I feel like we should probably also mine through here and see if we're missing something in this building that should, might, you know, end up creeping up on us. Either way, this will be a nice freezer, so let's go and take a look here if you don't mind. No, nope, we're good. What is that? Bone Creek tile. Oh, weird. I wonder if that does anything. It's a shame we can't examine the floor to see if it gives, like, um, I don't know, like a health bonus or anything like that for a hospital. Um, interesting. This is a nice first base. Yeah, we'll definitely take this if you don't mind. Thank you. I will take it for absolutely no cost. Right, let's build the roof area. I'll get the things hauled over into storage, and then we'll be good to start our occult cult for the second time. Now, while we're letting the uh, while we're letting Eagle through there, just build up the base and haul some things over. One thing I have done is I've removed the hygiene mod just because it's it's we're already playing with quite a difficult mod pack anyway in terms of the sanity management, in terms of the extra animals added, the arachnophobia with being extra hunted by the spiders, dealing with the occult stuff. I didn't think it was necessary to add that further layer of difficulty in the sense that we have to manage you know water supplies and water treatment and hygiene. Um, so I've taken that out. You know, it's also not base game reward, and I feel like this this mod is balanced for base game, so I've, I've stripped that out. Taking out the Alpha Animals mod, because some of those animals were really dangerous, and I have a feeling that might be the mod that killed us. I did Google it quickly on the Steam Workshop to see which mod adds that as a sub-mod, but I wasn't entirely sure um, the, the event that killed us last game, that was. So, she's going to haul some stuff over. We are on a big river still, though, because I just like the river maps. Uh, there's really not much else to it, I'll be honest with you. Just like the way it looks. So, again, I think we'll go for the mountain base, because I kind of like the idea of being inside uh, the mountain and sort of having our cult in there. Building up into, like, this big underground utopia seems kind of cool to me. I, I like this building that we've started off in there. That's kind of nice. Right, Eagle Throog, what do we want from you? God, Speed 3 seems really, really slow now. I'm glad we're planning on it, though, just because, for my own benefit, I feel like I'm going to be much less impatient now. So let's get that layer. Let's actually start planning out the base a little bit. So, what is that? Wooden stove furnace. Cooks meats and produces heat, runs a fuel after a fuel. Okay, sweet. That's kind of cool. So it's like a more upgraded campfire, but still kind of primitive. Uh, we've also got a refrigerator there, but I actually have the refrigeration mod uh, under the temperature tab here. Oh, that was the... <clears throat> Don't mind me. All right, uh, let's go for this cooler. I think we'll only need one for a room that small. We're not going to have much food anyway, seeing as we are a single character right now. Now, we also probably want to, before we get too far into things, uh, put a wooden door down. This is going to be a bedroom, so it's got the chest set in it, so she'll appreciate that a little bit more. Let's go for, in terms of furniture, we'll just go for a regular bed. We'll go for an end table, too, if I can find it amongst all this shit. Um, end table, perfect. Dresser at the top there. And then uh, we'll move that a little bit more conveniently, I suppose, rather than it being right smack bang in the middle of the room, more or less. Um, let's go ahead and claim the whole base as well, so it counts as our home area there. Right, let's reinstall this so it's... Um, I suppose there 
And it's all made of bone. So that's win-win. That's, that's one of my ultimate goals is building that huge bone throne. Mainly because they are like saying the words bone throne. But B, because it's a fucking throne of bones. And I feel like if anyone deserves a throne bone, it's Eagle Throog. Or literally any other characters that we've ever played as in any game. But also Eagle Throog deserves one as well. This has been a much better start. I mean, look at day two here compared to day one of that last base. Everything's set up. We've got a bedroom. We've got lights. We're just about to finish. I'm working on a wood fire generator instead of um, the windmill. The windmill turned out to be really inefficient, and it's lots of micromanagement constantly dealing with the plants, unless obviously you um, basically floor over the area that it's accompanying. So, encompassing, not accompanying. So, I feel like this is a much better setup. I kind of like the early game wood fire generator until, like I said, we can get something like solar panels. That might be a better call, and eventually nuclear power, because that's what I kind of expect. But I, I like the idea of us playing this sort of, um, I don't know if I described it very well last time, but like this sort of um, Umbrella Corp style cult, where we're doing all the genetic research, but we're doing it in sort of a pseudo-religious manner. I, I think that'd be kind of cool. Anyway, um, less of that, more of the, what the fuck are you doing right now? Oh, she's going for a walk, obviously, going out for a walk. Um, so, once we've finished off the farms, what is there to do? Well, we're going to research batteries, we're going to research more efficient form of power than, uh, this generator, but I figured this generator is also a good backup generator if we need it. We can always forbid it, and then have them refuel that as and when we uh, need it. So that's pretty useful, I think, uh, e even if it does become obsolete later on. Oh great, a panther, it's hunting, 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 <laughs> panthing, eagle for food. Okay then, um, fucking run, eagle? We got running gun enabled, we do, shit. Oh god, get back, get back, just open fire, just open fire and get back. Oh, thank god for that. Okay, thank god. So we've got a mod called Run and Gun, which funnily enough allows you to run and gun because we were quite close distance there. We weren't at too much of a risk of uh, missing it there. Why did that panther hunt us? I assume it was just trapped in this building and couldn't get out because obviously we had doors there. So um, it's a little bit unfortunate. How? Oh, she actually took no damage at all. Holy shit. Ow. I guess it just didn't catch her in time. Oh, nice eagle. Oh, shit. I thought we were going to have a repeat of the last colony there. We were just getting wiped out by animals. Okay, that's good. Um... <laughs> Not a great start, but still good. Right, we need to set the bills for the butcher's table. So what we do is we can just go uh, butcher creature forever within a particular radius. So we'll do it here. And similarly, we'll go... Um, so the way I like to do this personally is we start with cooking a simple meal. Uh, just because that's the, the most basic one to obviously deal with. Um, radius sort of around here. For one person, I generally go... You probably want about 20 meals in storage per one individual. That way, in the case of a solar flare, you should be good for a couple of days. Uh, just as a backup there. So what we'll do is we'll say that ingredient range that includes our freezer We'll say do until we have uh, like I said 20 meals pause and then unpause at five And that's generally how I like to do things now because we're cooking more than um, 10 meals obviously we can go bulk cook 10 meals as well So we'll do uh, until we have 20 and then again, we'll unpause it at uh, at five there and again We want to do keep the ingredients range Otherwise, they can use rotten meat things like that depending on how you got your stockpile set up But it's always worth just doing it as a backup and you know what? If we've got enough meat, fuck it. Oh, no one can do that because we don't have the cooking skill. All right, never mind then. Doesn't matter. We'll sort that out later on, assuming she ever gets that good at cooking. We might actually probably recruit a better cook in the meantime, because that's one of the things she's not particularly sufficient at. And of course, I've downloaded the Furniture Plus mod, so we can better decorate our cult. Although, obviously, we probably can't build half this stuff out of bone, but we can, though. Holy shit. Um, okay, I wasn't expecting that. That's kind of cool. Right, okay, well, that's good, because these are the... um. So, the reason I didn't know how to use these end tables before was because I'm always used to the Furniture Plus mod, which actually shows you a visible indicator of where you can put these uh, tables. I don't know about you guys, but the end table I have in my personal bedroom in real life is next to my bed, not down the end of the bed, because that's not particularly practical in my opinion to have a table at the end of your fucking bed. Maybe that's just me though. Anyway, look, what's the point? We can build plant pots and things like that to just bring up the general uh, beauty of the rooms very easily. Very simply, so we're definitely going to do that. Um, we're just basically putting in all the rooms she's going to be frequenting a lot. So next to the butcher's table couldn't hurt. Maybe one in the entrance there just for a quick mood boost on the way in. Now, has that got floor beneath that door? Yeah. It's got concrete. Because why not? Um, what is this? Mushrooms? Oh, that's kind of cool. So we do have the agriculture mod. Um, which I think I may have briefly mentioned again. The entire mod list for this mod pack is in the description. Although I have done some tweaking because of obviously the, uh, the crashes. And um, the unbalanced events and the storyteller sort of flipping his shit and sending a death squad after me in the first 20 minutes of the gameplay. Um, <laughs> don't worry about that too much. Death squads are fine. Not a concern. But obviously I've tweaked things since then. So that model list might be a little bit difficult to... Uh, difficult? Different to what we play now. And difficult. Definitely difficult. Can confirm. Nice. So we've got two different types of recreation. We've got... Um, I forget what they're called. 
Need recreation variety. Well, we've apparently fulfilled that. Anyway, we've got sort of logical recreation, like physical, or something along those lines. Two different types of recreation there. Um, we've got recreation hours set up. That's good. Her mood is very, very high. We've got lights, so we haven't got the in darkness debuff either. Although we do haven't, we haven't quite finished the uh, the lights there. So let's go ahead and run some cables up around the top of the base as well. That should just about cover everything we need to do there. Oh, okay. Visitors from the colony. Um, they have no guest beds. So we've also got Orion's Hospitality Mod, which will allow us to recruit people from fellow factions or in turn increase our mood with factions. They can come and visit the cult. I mean, we can convert them to cultists, but obviously that's a double-edged sword because cults can sometimes be frowned upon, um, especially if we've got the agency nearby, who if they see any signs of occultism, so the altar or cultist costumes, they'll immediately uh, mark us as hostile. Minus 100 opinion, try and hunt us down. So we need to be a little bit careful with how we manage this. Refuse them until we have guest beds. Probably the sensible idea. Otherwise, they'll sleep on the floor and they get annoyed at us, and that will reduce faction relations. We've got Agriculture 1 already queued up there, and that, I think, is the best idea. So, again, I'm not sure if I've mentioned this in a previous video, whether it's a video I've deleted. But what these do, just for posterity's sake, is that um, red lentils and olives count as replacement proteins for meat. They're not as good as meat, and they're not as efficient as meat. For example, you might have to farm 50 lentil plants to get the same as you would get from one hunt. But eventually, with a big enough crop or hydroponics, you can eliminate the need to actually hunt animals or fish or anything along those lines because you've got a crop replacing it. So we could be a purely vegetarian society. Sinful, in my opinion. Um, but in terms of game efficiency, in terms of self-sustainability, this is not a bad idea. Now, we also, talking along that lines, we also want batteries and solar panels, I would say, as well. Just so we can sort of forget a little bit about having to refill this generator so that we don't have to constantly worry about getting wood for it as well. Uh, so let's go solar panels. Now is, uh, hang on, wait, solar panels, yeah, right. So is, oh, that's what I was just about to ask, are watermelons generated added by the hydrogen mod? No, they're not. Um, so we could always stick those on the river as well. Now those generate a decent amount of power. I think it's about 1100 watts per watermill generator, but you can't place them too close to one another. Otherwise, um, they interfere. But with a river this size, I mean, let's not worry about it, eh? Now we should also probably scope out these other buildings, see if there's anything cool in there. Igor, get your gun. Um, there might be some survivors, there might be some horrible mutants, there might be some vampires. Or they could just be empty rooms with some furniture in it. Hopefully the latter. Oh, Christ. Okay. Um, I was wrong. There are horrible, horrible monsters. Uh, Igor, run. Oh, shit. It's got Scyther Blade. Uh, okay. Igor, definitely. Fuck. I wasn't expecting that. Okay. Run, 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 Igor. Thank you. Run and gun. Run and gun. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you, Igor. Okay, keep. Oh, thank fuck. Well, um, what did we get for that? We got 72 components. And it's all steel walls as well. Holy shit. Um, again, wasn't expecting... A fucking scyther to be stood behind that wall. But there we go. Wow. Um, how are you doing? Are you alright? No immediate danger. She got stabbed in the leg by that one. Okay. Um, immediately tend to yourself then. Let's set self-tear to tend to be on there. Self-tear? That's, that's a cross between self-care and self-tend. Okay. Uh, you gotta deal with that before we uncover any more of these buildings. I didn't realise. I kind of said that half in jest. That there would be monsters in there. But it turns out there actually could be. There's also a potential monster building there. And, and there. And there. Okay, worrying. Let's take this carefully. Oh god, there are a bunch of arachnids over here. So these things very quickly get out of control. What you'll find is they'll spawn in. They will deal with a lot of animals on the map. So they, they build these um, webs, basically. When an animal walks through the web, they'll be stunned. And then the spider will come in, cocoon them up, and carry them back to their, their main base, which is here. Um, let's not wander too far over there. Because if Eagle Throog runs, runs over it, let's say that uh, a, co a colony pod? Well, maybe. Let's say a colony pod, a, a transport pod, a cargo pod, whatever, drops nearby... She goes over to investigate, walks through the web, that's it, game over. Because once she's in a cocoon, obviously we can't free her with a different colonist, so we have to be careful here. There's not going to be a Samwise Gamgee to our eager Throog. Let's put it that way. How could I forget? The biggest Roomworld mistake of all. You guys know what it is. I don't think I need to point it out. Yep, eight without a table. Besides that, she's absolutely in heaven. Eight without a table, obviously without the serious pain. She did just fight a mechanoid, ignore that one. Eight without a table, though. Um, that's my own fault. Completely my own fault. So, let's try and resolve that before we do anything else. Biggest urgency here. Right. Um, right. Okay, careful. Careful. We've done it. Problem solved. Okay, uh, genuinely though, I should have probably done that. Uh, it's a little bit annoying. I, I do know there's that meme around it. The 8 without a table meme. Pretty good. Uh, r slash RimWorld, if you're interested in RimWorld related memes. There's like the third post on that subreddit. is my favourite of all time. It actually had me in tears when I first saw it. Was that um, you, when they added the final straw update. So it told you what actually gave them the mental breakdown. There's a comic... That I'll link below. I'll, I'll put it in the top comment. I'm going to make a note here so I don't actually forget to do it. Um, I'm not, I won't spoil the punchline or anything. Go and take a look at that if you like RimWorld. Because that comment had me in fucking tears. Uh, RimWorld comic. There we go. I've written a note. 
so I can forget about it later. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, ooh, Group of Travelers by Robo. Hello, Robo. Um, what have you got? You're just traveling by? They're complaining about it being soaking wet. Granted, you have walked through a fucking river. Oh, to be fair, there's only one way to get in there. That's apparently through the river. That's fine. Oh, shit. Oh, God. Have mercy. It begins already. What is behind door number two? Dare I ask? Okay, very carefully, firmly grasp it. Okay, right. Let's let's take this slowly. Right. Oh, fuck me. What a mistake. What a mistake. Have they got guns? Have they just got blades? Um, looks like they've just got blades. We might be okay. Um, Igor Throog, I need you to fucking run for your goddamn life. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, this is really bad. Right. Get across the river. While they're crossing the river, we've really got the drop on them. But after that point, they're going to catch up in no time. Oh, shit. Okay. Keep firing. Keep firing. That's it. Take him out. Take him out. Okay. Keep moving. This running gun is very, very useful. Don't hit the rhinos. Oh, careful not to hit the rhinos. Because if they get revenge, then we are screwed. There's one down. Fucking mechanoids, honestly. Oh, God. We actually did hit rhino. Don't get rhino revenge. My God. This is tense. This could screw us. Well, I mean, it's not tense at all. That guy's never going to get to it. All right. Eagle through. Stone cold killer. Um, what did we get out of that? We got an assault rifle that's decayed into shit. And we've also got, not into actual shit, but, you know, it's decayed quite heavily there. We've also got 23 Glitter World Medicine. Holy shit, that's a, that's a genuinely good bounty there. Alright, um, let's go ahead. Haul these boys over. We should also haul the mechanoids themselves so that we can break them down later on a machining table. Um, I've marked the gold to be hauled urgently as well. I think that's all we actually dropped with. That's the only thing left to actually get to the base. We'll check these out later on. You know, I think she's been through enough right now. I don't think she took any damage from that either, did she? Nope, still the old ones. Good work, Eagle. Speed 3. It's a blessing. I'm so glad I got rid of that speed rod mod, and I hope that you guys are too, because honestly, that was uh, that was the killer of the series. That was genuinely going to kill the series, because I'm way too impatient for something like that. I haven't got the self control. Right, let's get those uh, let's get those boys back there. Now that's going to give us plenty of components for a very very long time. We should probably keep 20 in reserve so we can build the uh, manufacturing table as well. She's not going to craft them. In fact, I don't think she can actually craft them at all, can she? Um, crafting skill is a grand total of four. So no, she can't. She's going to have to cut a lot of stone blocks before then. Uh, apparently, there's another room there. Shit. Okay. Apparently, they made it so that crafting stone blocks no longer gives, uh, crafting information. So I've undone that. I fixed that. Um, because I think that's crafting information. Did I say crafting experience? Which I think is really dumb. Um, that crafting blocks all day wouldn't make you better at crafting blocks all day. Maybe that's just me, though. Oh, Christ. Is she going to... Oh, I genuinely thought she was going to investigate the evil tree then. Let's wait until she's completely back at full health. 100%. Happy Igor before we go ahead and do something like that. Because last time that's what killed the game. She went nuts. Then those things turned up. She couldn't defend herself. So she was dead. We need to be a little more careful about this. Where's that mad monkey though? Where are you? Alright. It's on its way. We've dealt with two mechanoids. Is the monkey going to stand a chance? Is he what takes down Igor Throog? I'm going to assume no. going to be honest. Probably a no from me. Where is she? Oh, she's gone to bed. Naturally. You know, it is six o'clock. Time for bed. Shit, here it comes. Okay, she's fired the first volley. Is it going to hit? No, we're in so much danger. This monkey's got us. My god, it hasn't got scyther blades, but those things can rip your arms off. I mean, chimps can. I think this is just a... This is just like a little monkey, though. Oh, shit. Um, Igor, I hate to say it, pal, but you did better against the murderous war machines. Okay, that was worrying them for a second. Let's eat its brains and uh, and get AIDS instead. Mm-mm. Panther meat and mushroom, just like mum used to make it. Wow, that's, um, that's really inspired. Good recipe. She needs to write herself a panther meat... Mushroom and monkey meat. Cookbook with uh, Eagle Throog there. Right, now what we wanted to do is actually cut down some trees so she can finish off um, finish off the base here. Refuel on the generator. I'd like to see that that's her priorities. Thank you. Keep keep the base alive. Now we want to finish off the table. That's killing us. That's obviously still giving us that mood debuff because she had to, God forbid, eat without a table. I know. Unbelievable. The minor pain that she got from fighting monsters, like actual mechanoid killing machines, is almost as bad as eating without a table. It's a fucking game sometimes. Alright, um, yep, why not? 3 a.m., time to sleep. Okay, here we go. What we've been waiting for, it's happening. We're investigating the eerie tree only about two thirds into the episode, but we've had some interesting stuff happen, you know? We fought a monkey, and, um, and that's about it. But that's kind of interesting. Okay, so let's go back to the eerie tree. Obviously, the Simpsons is going to happen. She's going to go a bit nuts. She's going to write herself a book. This is great. This is exactly where we need to be in our life, and this is going to help found our cult. In fact, it's going to lead to us founding the cult. Igor Grunt has a... <laughs> I thought that was like, you know, Igor, comma, Grunt, like a stage direction, but no, we're fine. Has begun obsessively writing pages of strange symbols. Um, 
Good. I've looked upon all the universe. I can't help but read this and see it as what some thought would having a Twitter bio, just based on the font. Maybe that's just me. Maybe that's what Cthulhu thought has in his uh, in his Twitter bio. Cthulhu. That's that's really the best I could do. I'm gonna be honest. Okay. Well, now she's sad because she obviously wrote the grimoire there. Now the question is, do we want to set this up? And honestly, I think we do, because that was sort of the point of this episode, uh, picking up from obviously what we did last time. I'm going to build a little secret cult base, uh, by which I mean it's going to be like a very tiny shed uh, dug out into this mountain where we can do cult-related things. You know what? Let's just push it right to the mountain edge. Fuck it. We need as much room as we can for cult-related activities. There we go. All right. That's, that's a big cult room. Now, I'm kind of squirreling it away a little bit. I'm, I'm hiding it in the mountain, so in case the agency come and visit and see... A big old occult grimoire next to an eerie tree. I feel like they might be a little bit pissed off at me. So this is probably not a bad plan to try and hide it away in the mountain a little bit. How's she doing? Is she alright? she recovered from her near mental breakdown? She's doing okay. You know what? She's actually not at any risk of breakdown. This is really good. She's anxious. She's got an occult grimoire. Obviously because of what's happened. When does that expire? 6.8 days. Shit. You have to be very careful because she will fall into that minor break risk category if we're not constantly on top of things. Why is her mood so... A th like, her threshold seemed really far shifted towards the top of the bar here. What's wrong with her? Um, bio? What do we, what do, we do? Thank green. Permanent mood effect plus 12. Even with that. Wow. Um, move speed. Yep, fine. Hard worker. Yep, fine. So she's got nothing that affects that. Um, very strange. Okay. So if we didn't have sanguine, she'd be at kind of a major break risk already then. Damn. I'm glad, I'm glad I picked that then for our single colonist playthrough. Before we get too into the research, let's go for our filing cabinet because that gives uh, something like a 5% bonus to research. It's not much, um, but it's kind of just like, hey, here's a furniture mod. We've got to fill it with some shit, so here's a filing cabinet. Thanks, Staples. Um, or your local equivalent, uh, I'm sure, also not sponsored by Staples, obviously. But if they want to, I do need, um, preferably, if they don't mind, a new microphone stand. Does Staples, does Staples sell that? I'm not sure that they do. L hey, fucker, finish this first. That's, that was kind of the entire plan. Thank you. I didn't just send you out there to chop down trees for the fun of it. Hey, you've done enough research, or five minutes of it. Get out there and chop down some trees. Alright, Agriculture 1. This is important because, like I said, this is going to replace our need to hunt. It's going to replace our need to fish. Not that we're fishing. Um, but, you know, it'll help out in the long term for the whole efficiency-based thing. Batteries. Probably should be going for those first in hindsight because we're wasting so much electricity, I imagine. Let's take a look. Um, yeah, we've got a grid excess of 370 watts here, so we are basically wasting... Um, Almost a third of our power. Over a third of our power, technically. We've got some rice. Nice. We can have a bit more than our monkey and panther meat meals here. We can get a little bit of variation into our diet. And have um, about 600 bags of rice there. We don't really grow anything else at all. Nothing worth growing. Potatoes take so long. It's not really worth it. Um, they're a bit more hardy. But we're in an environment where we can grow crops pretty easily. Not to worry about it. Um, corn, again. Sort of similar thing there. Um, harvested corn takes a long time to spoil. Again, not really worth it. Immune to blight. I didn't realize that. Barley's pretty good then. A uh, pincushion cactus. What does that do for us? I have absolutely no idea. Can we can we eat this? Can we eat cactus? This is the canonical story of Eagle Through, though everything we did in Oblivion was was a fever dream of Disworthies or something. A raid! Sweet, our first raid. By which I mean, oh no, our first oh god, he's wearing a bone mask. Mmm. Suddenly I feel a lot more threatened. Oh, staggeringly ugly? Okay, you know what? I can understand why you're wearing the bone mask. Can I take that off of you? Oh, we can. Oh, that's so good. Pain shock threshold plus 10%. Oh, that's cool. I want that. Um, if we can just knock him down then and strip it of him. If not, we'll wear a dead man's skull mask. That sounds even cooler. He's bought us some royal jelly. Uh, can cause addiction if abused. Annoying. Uh, he's also bought wake up, which, uh, funnily enough, can also uh, do the same thing, really. Uh, package survival meal. Okay, he's bought some food as well. Thank you. All right then, team. Eagle. Squad up. I say team, implying that we've got more than one fucking person. Just get out there and shoot that man. What's he bought? A club and a skull mask. Oh no, careful. We've got a high-powered rifle. All right. Uh, what the fuck is he? Let's just intercept him. Um, yeah, where'd, he, where'd he go, though? I thought he was on the left side of the map. Um, I think I've been bamboozled. Oh, shit. He's going to... Oh, there he is. I got him. I see him. Right. Let's head over. Where the fuck is he going, though? Um, where's he... Where's he going? Oh, he's heading this way. Right. Fair enough. Going the long way around. Trying to avoid the river? Oh, he's going over the river. Just kill him dead. This is a massacre. Oh my god. It's like the Founding Fathers all over again. Oh my god, we actually killed him. So this is great because now we can take the mask off of him. And it's not going to have the Dead Man's Apparel debuff. Um, or we could try and recruit him as well. Hmm, what do we think? What are his skills like? Um, Jesus. Uh, really not good at all. 
You will lose unused skills at half the rate of other people. Well, we've got the mad skills one, so that's irrelevant. Um, shooting level four, great. Animals level four. Crafting level three with a high passion. We could make him our stone cutting slave, or maybe our first human sacrifice. More to the point, we can name it after you guys. So, I feel like it's my duty as as series director to basically save this guy's life, unfortunately. We'll strip him and take his skull mask, obviously, because I feel like it suits Igor Throog much more than it uh, suits Abenero here. All right, finish your meal. <laughs> now let's uh, try and save this man's life that we just shot. All right, take the stuff off him. Let's get that equipped, obviously. Force wear that. What do we look like now, Igor? Let me, let me take a look at that beautiful face of yours. Holy shit. That's what I like to see. Look at this. Hang on, let's, let's get it pose near the body. There's your thumbnail right there. Cold, bloody killer. Right, okay, we actually do need to save you there. Not, no more pissing around. Um, he can live in the kitchen. Because I feel like he'll enjoy living in the kitchen. Right, let's get that built immediately. So I think we're not going to be able to build that before he actually exsanguinates. But, you know, that's down to me, really. Um, what's he looking like? Death in six hours. Oh, no, we should be all right. We should be all right. No, 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 no. No, no meals. No wood. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> okay, no, he's definitely doomed. Uh, let's chop down, chop down those. How much more wood do we need? We need another 30 wood. Uh, streamer, it's like 28 wood, actually. I don't remember how much wood it was. Okay, we need way more than that, though. Cut that down. Right, we good now? I still don't think we're good, are we? Let's wait and see. I could do the maths. Or I could not. Shit, are you serious? Yeah, dismantle that. Fuck it. Go mad? Alright, it's a matter of life or death. Literally. Um, and I would also like him to be our stone block slave so we can start work on the uh, cave base instead of this very susceptible, dangerous outside environment. Uh, what are you doing? Oh, you're tending to him. Right, good. Prisoner? Um, let's... Oh, shit. Resistance remaining. 50? Christ. Um... Okay. Wow. That will take about 40 years to recruit him. You know what? Should we just take his fucking spine or something? What do we think? Um, extract blood vial. Deadly. So that will kill him. Um... What do we think? We can take a lung, and and I think he'll survive. Um, let's take a kidney, and then let's take, if he survives all that, his spine? Oh, we, well, we can take his eyes. Holy shit, his eyes. One of his ears. Oh, we can take both of his eyes. That's not going to kill him. Genius. Uh, take his left eye. Right, oh, yeah, we've done that. We need his right ear. Good. Perfect. Um, we'll actually put those to the bottom of the list, because I imagine they're less likely to kill you. You can miss both the eyes and be fine. Um, if you're missing a kidney, your time, you, you, you honestly... You're on borrowed time, my friend. Okay, what else have we got then? Um, we can take an arm. We can take a fucking foot. Um, I think the spine is definitely more valuable. So let's um not do the operation anymore, or let's actually only do the operation. I should say. What can we do? Already tending to him. Do we have to actually tend him first? Really? Um, she's a surgeon. Yes, yeah, she's a surgeon. Yeah, maybe we do have to wait for that then. Okay, sure. Let's, let's patch him up, then harvest it. We don't want it to go bad, obviously. Alright. Maybe we should keep it in the freezer, just to keep him preserved. <laughs> Is that how that works? Can you preserve living creatures? Somebody Google that for me. Alright, um, Abenario, sorry, my friend. It's time to lose a lung. Um, I don't harvest by need material. Oh, we need medicine? We've got medicine. Oh, hang on, I need to mark him as being able to use that, don't I? Yeah, there we go. Right. Mm -hmm. No? The material. What am I missing? A little world medicine we've got. Right, okay. I mean... Uh... Well, that's a little bit annoying, because I actually wanted to take your, your lungs, though. Do I have to mark it to medical bed? Maybe that's what I needed. Nope. You know what, just fucking kill him. Just do it, just do him in. Honestly, I can't be bothered with all this shit. Um... We could also try and... You know what? You guys try and help me here. If we can... Re if, let me know what I'm missing to take his organs, basically. Because honestly, I have no idea. Um, in the meantime, we'll try and reduce his resistance just in case we, we somehow, through some act of God or Cthulhu himself, manage to recruit this dude. That way we can name him after you guys. And that's one off of my list of people to name him after. Right, team. Um, what's next? I mean, we need to actually set her to interact with... Oh, you know what? Awarding's pretty good. I feel like I've been bamboozled a little bit by the game here. Right. Okay, we'll set that to maximum then. And uh, we'll see how it goes later on. Thank you for watching um, episode 2, technically, of the rebooted Igor Throog uh, Remod Cult series. Next episode, we're going to found a cult. And uh, maybe also harvest a spine. Those things sound pretty fun. Shout out to all of my top tier ridiculous level. Insane. Uh, lunatic. Ooh. Tiny end of the series, you see. Clever. Level. <laughs> 
really not that clever. Level patrons, Big Dick Timmy, Sean Thornton, Zachary Harris, Harik, Lucas Holting, Haydog, Croesus, Gabriel Vendez, Josh Lynn, Dean Tesla, Michael Mullen, Logan Thorne, Conspiracy, James Ogilvy, Escape, and Jackson Widman for their insane spooky October levels of support. And then, of course, shout out to my sensible, not so insane level tier patrons, including Nathaniel Lindbergh. Brandon Montoniak, Necrophilin, Felix Deal, Princess of Glue the Dragon, Nick, Noblesse, Quet Lodge Clay, Zar Reven, Facundo Vasquez, Paul Master, Imperator Augustus, Jack Allen, Chancellor Sheep Apti, I'm the Lizard King, Lolan Thomas, Yoran DeVries, Euphrates, Duncan 27, Jordan Campbell, Astro and Sidney. Are you actually the Lizard King? Who crowned you? Who coronated you? I need to see some papers to prove this, because I'm gonna just start calling you the lizard like despot at some stage. Um next episode, I'm gonna harvest this man's spine. See you then. <laughs>